If current estimates are correct, then about 3.4 billion people will live in the Middle East and Africa MEA, by 2050. And this, for a second, will be more than in the same year we'll live in China and India combined. The ever-increasing number of people is putting serious pressure on governments, which are responsible for providing basic public goods such as electricity and water. Moreover, the issue of access to fresh water is particularly acute, and all this against the backdrop of global warming and increasing droughts around the world. The situation could be corrected by desalination, but it has not yet received mass development. Why is this happening? What hinders the spread of technology and what are the pitfalls? And most importantly, will desalination be able to quench the impending global thirst? The report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change claims that water problems, droughts, forest fires and floods will worsen. Wet regions will become wetter and droughts will intensify in arid regions. In the next 20 years, global temperatures will rise by at least 1.5 degrees Celsius. Extreme weather events will increase by 10%. It's already noticeable. Italy is experiencing the worst drought in 70 years. The level of the Po River has fallen by 3 meters. In the US, half of the states are suffering from the worst drought in a thousand years. The Colorado River dried up by 20%. In China, there is also the strongest drought. The Yangtze water level is 50% below average. Another fact is that both the frequency and duration of droughts around the world have increased by almost a third since 2000. That is, the situation is getting worse, and this is understandable. The number of people is growing, the climate is getting warmer and drier. We consume more water resources than we can restore. Countries without access to fresh water already are ought to think about how to desalinate the salt water of the seas and oceans. In 2018, there were about 16,000 desalination plants in the world located in 177 countries, which generated 95 million cubic meters of fresh water per day. The most active use of desalination technology is in the rich countries of the Middle East. For instance, the world's largest desalination plant is located in Saudi Arabia. Its capacity is 1.4 million cubic meters daily. Today, the kingdom covers up to 50% of its water needs due to this technology. There are two main desalination technologies. The first is thermal methods or distillation. The point is to make water evaporate in various ways, thus separating salts and impurities, and then make clean water condense into a liquid state. The second category is membrane methods including osmosis and electrodialysis. The main thing is to provoke the movement of water or its components to pass through special membranes that filter out salt and impurities. Reverse osmosis technology is considered the most efficient and less energy consuming. The main difficulty of desalination is that it requires a large amount of energy, especially for distillation and this is how 70% of all desalination plants operate. The problem is exacerbated by the fact that fossil fuels are used for this. For example, 25% of oil and gas production in Saudi Arabia goes to desalination, and by 2030, it will be 50%. Not surprisingly, critics of the technology speak of a vicious cycle. We desalinate water due to droughts, and during the process, we produce more greenhouse gases that affect the climate and in turn exacerbate droughts. Another problem is what to do with brine, a suspension with a high salt concentration. It is impossible to pour it back into the sea. It will immediately sink to the bottom and kill all living things. It has to be distributed at sea over large areas which also increase costs. Given these trends in the desalination industry, it is impossible to develop such technology in the poor countries of Africa and Asia. This is expensive and will worsen the water situation. But the water demand is growing, people need salvation, and it seems that one German startup has a solution. The Wincher German startup was founded in 2014 by two engineers, Hamed Beheshti, the CEO of the company, and Ali Al Hakim, the general manager CTO. Today, Wincher is the operating company. Boreal Light manufactures desalination facilities, and the Water Kiosk Africa project helps people on the African continent drink clean, fresh water. How? Thanks to the Wincher Planet Cube. As Dr. Hamad Beheshti says, through my experience with my solar backup systems projects in rural parts of the world, 
I realize that the need for water when electricity is absent is a game changer for rural communities. We first designed a solar water pump, but Boreal Light was born when we merged the solar water pump and a desalination system into one product. The company's engineers have developed their own desalination system based on low-pressure reverse osmosis technology. But the main revolutionary feature of the device is that it runs on 100% solar energy. We can say that the creators followed the pattern of in reverse in order to make the technology more accessible. They reduced it but did not scale it as is usually the case. And it gave the effect. The system does not require accumulators and pressure generators, which has reduced the cost and level of power consumption, and solar-powered operation has made the system available wherever there is no electricity, as well as ensured zero impact on the ecosystem. Maintenance of the system is minimally simple and does not require special knowledge, which simplifies operations in poor countries. The Wincher Planet Cube can treat wastewater and any reused water, which expands the geography of use and the small scale of the installation means a small amount of produced brine, which in such quantities can be used in agriculture. It is also possible to adjust the level of water treatment and installation performance. They can choose from four water quality options, drinking, irrigation, fish farm or sanitation water, and produce from 1,000 to 30,000 liters of water per hour. And the best part is that we are speaking about a rather cheap water of very high quality. The Wincher Planet Cube filters up to 99% of total dissolved solids TDS and also eliminates any organic and inorganic contamination, bacteria, and viruses. And all this for 0.5 euros per 1,000 liters. For comparison, a 20-liter flask of drinking water is currently sold in Africa for an average of $4. The solution from Wincher and Borea Light is already changing lives in Africa. For this, the water kiosk concept was invented, which is being implemented by the company of the same name. At the beginning of 2022, 18 water kiosks were operating in Tanzania and Kenya, of which three were in hospitals. And if not for the COVID-19 epidemic, there would be many more of them. Although due to restrictions, a logistics base was established in Nairobi which accelerated the process of implementing new projects. Now they plan to implement such projects across Africa, not just in Kenya and Tanzania. With proper use, desalination could be a sustainable way to replenish our water cycle, scientists say. Therefore, there is a huge need to make this technology both more financially and technologically accessible. This is the only way we can bring desalination to low- and lower-middle-income countries and in parallel with this, to solve one of the biggest problems of our time, which so far is only getting worse.